welcome back to my channel. If you are new here and like the video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button for more content. Thank you for watching. Hello you beautiful humans, welcome back to another part of the Mistletoe Christmas Special. If you can't tell already, this one is featuring Boku Aka. Let me just go ahead and remind, this series is strictly fluff, there is no angst. So, yeah. <laughs> It was dark and cold. The wind sounded like daggers flying through the pitch black sky. If there was a glimpse of the moon shining through the clouds, you'd have to squint your eyes to see past the blinding ground with a blanket of freshly fallen snow. There was a blizzard, the worst they've seen in years. The heavy amount of snow knocked out power lines, rendering them blind in the pitch black night. With their power out, their heaters were concluded useless, leaving the couple clinging to each other, using their body heat to warm each other. Being the anemic mess he was, Akashi was even more affected by the bitter cold, yet equally relieved that Bokuto was a living furnace. The couple were spending their Christmas Eve together, curled up on the couch with warm fuzzy blankets and a heater next to them as they were drinking hot cocoa and watching Christmas movies. Honestly, it was a perfect way to start Christmas. That was until the blizzard hit. For once, the news was finally accurate with their weather predictions. At least it was going to be a white Christmas, like how every child wants to wake up with mountains of snow on the ground. Except this wasn't exactly how Akashi wanted to end the night. He was constantly shivering, but the captain rubbing his back was comforting him, spreading more warm throughout his back. The wind was howling, but Bokuto's soft breaths made those horrid sounds from outside fall on Death's ears. There were a couple times the setter genuinely thought the house would blow over, but each time his worries invaded his thoughts, the ace was there to assure him that they were going to be just fine. Realizing that there was no chance of them getting sleep anytime soon, Bokuto spoke up, suggesting an idea. Do you want to burn some time and warm up? Akashi laughed through chattering teeth. How do you suppose we do that in negative degree weather? The taller never responded. Instead, he threw the covers off of himself with much protest from Akashi, making him regret asking the question. What are you... Come on! The Awa attempted to drag the smaller out of the bed. No, it's freezing! What are you... You want to get warm, right? Akashi thought for a moment. It was true that the cold was starting to get to him, and not in a good way, but he also wanted to let the darkness take over his conscious state. But knowing how absolutely terrible that sounded, and how equally stubborn the captain was, there was no use in arguing. Yes. Okay, you have to trust me. Without any hesitation, he replied, I do. Because he did. There wasn't any additional thinking that needed to be involved. He did trust him. With saying those words, he connected his hand to the captain's, feeling his own finger that resembled icicles, already relishing at Bokuto's warmth. He wondered how exactly he was able to stay so warm. Bokuto then flicked on a lantern and set it out onto the middle of the bedroom floor. Before, they had no light, suffice with just bundling up and laying down. So the new light took some time adjusting to. The owl took out his phone and vigorously started typing on the keyboard. Bokuto, we're supposed to be saving the battery. It'll be fine. This is just until we tire out. Plus, we still have your phone. 
Akashi slept stunned, keeping in mind his phone is half useless if he wasn't able to get into contact with the A's, but he didn't say anything because he knew that the latter was doing this for him. And that beautiful thought was more than enough. He was pulled from his thoughts with the sound of violins and then the piano filled a silent room. Soon, a whole orchestra melody was playing, and he looked towards his lover, taking in a shaky breath, mostly from the cold, seeing his lover's own breath in the air. Bulgato had one arm tucked behind his back, and the other held out towards Akashi. He was bowed in a 90 degree angle, while his head was arched to keep his eye contact with his lover. His golden eyes peeked through the ungelled hair, making it all the more adorable. Care to share this dance with me? Okay. This was it. Life was fulfilled. He thought he saw it all, but nope. There are Boca to win, always finding ways to surprise him. He cursed that he was born into the century when dancing in the middle of the snowstorm wasn't normalized. Akashi felt a giant, goofy smile of his growing, and he didn't hide it, not even his dimples that he grew up despising because of their abnormality. But Bogoto loved it. He loved him. Finally, the raven took the teller's hand and pulled him up from his now very awkward bow. I would love to. Akashi gently brushed the latter's bicolored locks, planting a small, soft kiss on his forehead. Immediately, Bokuto snaked his armor on the latter's waist and started dancing to the music. It wasn't at all means pretty, or even matching the music, but at that moment, everything around them vanished. The bedroom with too many blankets account, the half dragon mugs of hot cocoa on the nightstand, the heavy snowstorm from outside, and the bitter cold, and even the music. They were in their own little world. For once that night, Akashi wasn't cold. Well, unbearably cold. He was laughing, jumping all over the place. After dancing, Bogota would put on clips of karaoke on YouTube from his phone. They would take turns singing completely off-key, given that neither of them had any talent whatsoever in any form of music. Somehow, they found themselves close together, gently swaying back and forth with more music, like it was the end of time. And if the blizzard really would take them out, it would be okay, because they were together, in each other's embrace. Akashi buried his face into Bokuto's neck, taking in his sweet scent of Himalayan sea salt and soft sandalwood, while brushing his fingers on the hairs placed generously on the back of the latter's head. bokuto -san? He could already feel the pout forming from the taller, making him crack a smile. Go? Promise that no matter what happens, you'll never change. The ace smiled. Only if you promise the same. I... He was interrupted with the power flicking on before I was off yet again. Dude, why even bother turning on if you're gonna turn back off not even a second later? Akashi broke into a fit of laughter, making his abdomen ache. <laughs> I love you, Gotaro. Akashi's rosy cheeks from the cold had nothing on Bokuto's inflamed ones. For a second, the setter was worried that the taller would black out before he yelped, feeling his feet leaving the ground. I love you more. Their lips connected, sharing a loving and sweet kiss, tasting the hot chocolate from one another. That's not fair. Bokuto pulled away, raising a curious eyebrow. It seems you spoiled the surprise. Surprise? Akashi hopped out of the captain's arms and went to his dresser, 
He then pulled open a drawer, pulling out a bushel of mistletoe. The taller roared in laughter. I didn't know you were a traditional person. The smaller shocked. I'm not, but I'm willing to try for you. I know that's what normal couples do. Bokuto smiled, sitting himself on the bed and led the ladder beside him. I don't want to take part of anything that makes you uncomfortable. I don't care if we don't fit the standards of normal couples. Standards are overrated. Finding the cold too much, the couple went back underneath the covers, cuddling each other. I truly don't mind. This one seems sweet and sincere. Well... Bokuto took the mistletoe and held it over their heads. I think you owe me a kiss. Akashi smiled, leaning in. Once their lips connected, the lights flickered on again, but this time they stayed on. I didn't know we had electric love. At least the heat is back on. We can finally sleep. Bokuto pulled the smaller in close into his arms, placing tiny kisses onto the top of his head. Good night, my love. Good night. The setter leaned up and pressed one last kiss onto his lover's lips before he laid back down and fell asleep in his arms. Well, that is the end of this. I'm not going to lie, I like angst better. It works better with me, so... <laughs> my fluff is always not that good, so... Yeah, this definitely could have been better. But I hope that you did enjoy this. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you'd like to be kept up to date, check out any of my social medias. I hope that you all have a wonderful day or evening.